But income property is a multi-dimensional asset. So it has so many dimensions where you can make money. And all of these dimensions allow you to adjust your strategy as times change. First of all, in 2008, when the market crashed, the whole country did come down. But where I'm at in Southern California, specifically Orange County, we saw prices drop 60%. Yeah. yeah. In Phoenix, in Florida, we saw prices drop 50, 60%. But some parts of the country only dropped 10. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. And so yeah. back to your diversification. Um, yes, the whole country came down at once, but if I would have been diversified, I was only in Orange County. So I took a massive hit. I got wiped out. Yeah. If I would have had properties in other parts of the country that only came down 10%, my portfolio would have survived much better. Right. Yeah. So. Yeah. I agree. Um, you know, it's really, uh, we've all heard of, of the, uh, the famous piece of literature called the tale of two cities, right? Well, this is a tale of three markets. There are three types of markets in the entire world. You can categorize any market into one of these three linear markets, cyclical markets and hybrid markets. And uh, I, I grew up in Los Angeles and lived most of my adult life where you live in Orange County, California. Beautiful place and I love it. And uh, my idea of being an investor back then was buying you know, Orange County properties, which are too expensive to make sense as an investment. And one of my 10 commandments back to that is commandment number five, called thou shalt not gamble, okay? And when, um, when we buy properties in these expensive cyclical markets, and those include the entire West Coast of the US pretty much, okay? So all of Southern California, all of California basically. Uh, South Florida, where I'm, I'm not too far from now, uh, Miami, Fort Lauderdale area. Uh, the expensive Northeastern markets, New York, Boston, Washington DC, et cetera. These are all cyclical markets. And they're all expensive markets. These are nice places to live for sure, okay? They're great. Uh, but they're not great places to invest necessarily because they never make sense from a cash flow perspective. And how do we evaluate cash flow? Well, there are many ways, and you know, you're a sophisticated investor, you know how to do that, but there's an, a quick, easy rule of thumb. And that is just looking at the rent to value ratio. So we like to get properties that rent for close to 1% of the value every month. So a $120,000 house in Memphis or uh, you know, Little Rock or Indianapolis, these are all markets we like and we invest in, that'll rent for $1,200 a month or close to that is great, okay? That's a linear market. That's the opposite of cyclical. Okay. And, uh, and, and so those are good. In Southern California, your typical deal would be a $600,000 house that would rent for maybe $2,800 a month. And so that's less than 0.5. And the key to real estate is staying power. Staying power, if you can stay in the game, you'll almost always make money in real estate. Okay. Mm -hmm. But the thing that allows you to stay in the game is a good rent to value ratio or good cash flow. If yep. you don't have that, it becomes very hard to stay in the game during bad times. Yeah, exactly. And I love, I love that you say that. That's exactly my philosophy. So we see eye to eye on that. And, and that's what got me into trouble in 2008 was uh, in Southern California, you can't rent the properties for the, for the mortgages. Yeah. You can't carry them. And so when the markets dropped 50, I, I thought I was good at, you know, 70% LTV, but then the market dropped 60% yeah. and I couldn't carry the properties. Right. You know, I had way yeah. too much and it was, it was too much. Um, but hey, it, hey, hey, listen, you were, don't feel bad. You were in the same boat with tens of millions of people. So <laughs> you had good company. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Well, I, w I was young at that time. And so, you know, what I, I'm a student of history. If anyone, wa you know, everyone here watching my YouTube channel knows, I always try to go back to history to understand what's going on. And so I looked at, well, California real estate only dropped really one time from 89 to 92. And over that time, it dropped 30%. But it really only dropped the worst in 12 months was 6%. And I was usually in and out of deals in about 12 months. So I said, okay, 6% was the worst. Let me double that. If it dropped 12%, am I okay? Yeah. If it, if it did triple, if it dropped 18%, would I be okay? Yeah. If it dropped 18%, yeah. I'm okay. Triple the worst in history, but then it did 60. And I yeah. was like, oh. Yeah. Right. Um, 
But you talked about investing for cash flow. Mm -hmm. So I think uh, maybe just explain that real quick. A lot of people think that investing in real estate is buying low and selling high. Yeah, right. But you're right. saying that's not the right way to invest in real estate. Not at all. Not at explain all. Explain that. Um, you know, most uh, most in, uh, investments that people talk about commonly are one dimensional. And the strategy is just as you said, Mark, buy low, sell high, right? That's the whole strategy. There's nothing else to it, right? Buy low, sell high, make money. Now, uh, the next dimension would be buy low, sell high, get income like dividend paying stocks or cash flow real estate. So you can buy low, sell high, you can make income, you can get tax benefits, you can get leverage, which allows you to do much more than you normally could, meaning uh, it's the most debt favored asset class in America. Of course, it's the most tax favored asset class in America. And uh, you, can, you can improve the property, you can improve the strategy, the marketing. There's so many creative things you can do. And this is why income property is the most historically proven asset class in the entire world, because it's multi-dimensional. And that's, yeah. that's very handy. Yeah. And what I constantly pound the table on, on my channel and to my audience is investing for cash flow. So yeah, yeah buy that crypto, that Bitcoin, that's going to go up a hundred, you know, a hundred times or buy this gold stock that can go up five X. But what do you do with those profits? I like to take those profits and always yeah. put it back into cash flow. I work off of something called the four pillar investment strategy. And one of the four pillars is cash flow. It needs right. to be a big piece of your portfolio. I think it's a lie that we've been fed that says, uh, save your money for 40 years and live off your savings. Yeah, no like, way. Why? You'll, Just like you'll get killed. Yeah, Ca taxes and inflation will destroy you. Saving money does not work. Uh, you know, people that still have that mentality are living off a playbook that ended in 1971 when we went off the gold standard. Right. Okay. Money became an asset that is just constantly being debased by inflation. And, you know, if it's in a savings account by taxes also, because you pay tax on the smidgen of interest that you yeah. get. Uh, so saving is a, a dangerous strategy. You want to invest, not save. Uh, you, you do want to, I, I don't want to say that, you know, the concept of saving is bad because the road to wealth for an individual or a society is always capital formation. You've got to, you know, you don't want to spend all your money. You do need to save it to, in order to invest. But your strategy is great because, you know, you can play with maybe 10% of your net worth, play some speculative bets that might pay off a hundred times over. It might be cryptocurrency. It might be a startup business, uh, you know, on a private placement memorandum or something like that. Most of them, you'll lose money on those deals, but the one that hits could hit really big for sure. Right. You know, just ask, uh, just ask, uh, you know, any of the early investors in some of these crazy tech companies, right? Yep. Uh, uh, you know, Peter Thiel, I, I love his work. And, you know, he was one of the early investors in Facebook and PayPal. And, you know, those were like giant home runs. But you don't do that with your, your core money, right? 70% of your net worth should be in core conservative assets. And when you make money in those home run assets, then take some off the table. Like Kenny Rogers used to say, you got to know when to hold them, know when to fold them, right? Yep. Know when to walk away, know when to run. Take them off the table, put them in the long-term conservative stuff and you'll be good. Yeah.